empowers your destiny. It empowers your destiny. Grace empowers destiny. That grace is the reason why God ignores your error and then colors your efforts. It's the reason why God ignores your error and then he colors your effort. Honey from the rock with cereal basse. Always a life-changing experience. Robert, let me show you about five things that you need to do to create an atmosphere of grace in your life. Number one, be born again. Receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. That's it. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. What this grace brings is what? Salvation. Somebody say salvation. Yes. What this grace brings is salvation. So this is where the journey begins. This grace carries salvation. If you want to receive the grace, receive that salvation. You cannot receive the grace of God if you are not saved, if you are not born again, if you are not washed from your sins. So you create an atmosphere. You create an atmosphere. I've heard people say, well, you don't even know that you don't need to do anything for you to receive the grace of God. No, 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 you need. Because today you understand that there are different kinds, different dimensions of grace. Bible talks about, 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 about 22 or there about different kinds of grace. So it depends on the grace that you're looking at. Paul said, the grace was bestowed upon me and I labored more abundantly, more than them all. So the first thing that you have to do to create this atmosphere of grace around you, receive Jesus. So all what I'm talking about, it happens, hey, you step in at the right time, grace will do this, grace will, 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 will color your effort and ignore your all of this. You begin to build that atmosphere around you the day you receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. The number two thing that you have to do for you to create an atmosphere of grace around your life is to have desire for divine presence. Desire for divine presence. Number one, be born again. Number two, have a strong desire for divine presence. What do I mean? The presence of God. Genesis 39, verse 3, 4, and 5. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Talking about Joseph. His master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper. Verse number 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And the Lord made him overseer over the house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. But for emphasis, look at verse number 3 and 5 again. And the master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in the sight. and In his sight rather. When he saw that the presence of God was around him, the Bible says he had grace from, he had grace from his sight. When he saw that the presence of God was with Joseph, that automatically released Joseph into a place of divine grace. He obtained grace from the master. When the presence of God overshadows
lose your life then you will automatically impose grace upon anybody who is your master the increase of the presence of God is equal to the increase in what? the grace that you carry when the presence increases favor increases when the presence increases grace increases number three grow in knowledge grow in knowledge desire knowledge second peter 1 verse 2 grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god through the knowledge of god grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of our lord jesus grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god through the knowledge through the knowledge through the knowledge in other words the more you know god the more grace multiplies hello through what oh talk to me church through what through what through the knowledge of god so the more you know god the more grace multiplies the more you study to show yourself approved unto God, the more grace multiplies. The more you spend time to know God, the more you grow in the, the grace be multiplied through the knowledge of God. Through the knowledge. That's why you have to study the word. That's why you have to buy tapes, buy materials, listen to the word of God. Through the knowledge of God. Know God. Desire to have a higher level of knowledge about God. He said to that woman, you worship, you know not what you worship. John 4. He said you worship, you know not. Which means there are a lot of people that worship God without knowing God. Amen. They don't know God. But they are worshiping God. The Bible is speaking about Samuel. The Bible said, and the child was saving in the house of the Lord but the child had not yet known the Lord but he was saving Samuel was saving but he had not yet known the Lord this could be the reason why a lot of people are in the house of God serving God but yet no grace in their life because they don't have the knowledge of God he said to that woman in the book of John chapter 4 he said you worship is it 424 or thereabout he said you worship and you know not what you worship and there could be so many people in the house of God who worship and they don't know who they worship or what they worship. That's why every Sunday morning they come to church, every Thursday they come to church. Why? Because my friend has come. Oh, because it's a traditional that we have to go to church every Sunday. But someone asks you, why did you go to church? You don't know why. You don't know why. That's why you are deficient of grace. Somebody say knowledge. knowledge. Say it again. Say knowledge. knowledge. So why would you not come to learn to have knowledge of God? Why would you not come to service? Why would you not come to church? But you are praying for the grace. Yes. The reason why that veil was broken was so that those who could not enter could do what? Could come. He said, come all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come to my presence. And then you'll say born again and you then not come for midweek service. What kind of born again? What kind of born again is this? You say you're born again and then you don't give God priority in your life. What kind of born again is this? The book of Ephesians, it said grace be multiplied. Grace, is it grace be, be unto everyone that loveth our Lord Jesus Christ. I think there's a scripture like that. He said, grace be unto everyone that loveth our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6 verse 24. Your love for him, your passionate love for him. Look at it. 6 24. Grace be with you all. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. 
Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in what? In sincerity. In other words, everyone that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity will have what? The grace of God. Love. Passionate love for our Lord. Passionate love for his work. Passionate love for God. I don't mean love that you're being compelled. Someone has to compel you to save God. Someone has to compel you to, to worship God. Someone has to compel you to come to the house of God. This is not what I'm talking about. I mean passionate, sincere love. Grace will forever be multiplied to everyone that loved our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Not in hypocrisy. The day you say it from your heart, not from your mouth, nothing can separate me from the love of God. He will know. All this one you're talking with your mouth. Because you heard somebody say, ha, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. He knows. He knows that if, bam, you have denied him. Just imagine. Just a little disappointment that you had, you couldn't come to church. Just a little disappointment. There's something that you expected the thing did not come maybe a job the job did not come he didn't come to church or well, somebody just woke up and somebody broke your heart then you, because of that someone has broken my heart so you take the case against god but when god was warning you you didn't hear You made a little disappointment in your life and you're angry. You're angry with God. That means you don't love him. You don't love him. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. In sincerity. I talked about being born again. I talked about commanding divine presence. I talked about growing in knowledge. And then, you want to walk in grace. Overcome bitterness. Overcome bitterness. You can never walk in grace when your heart is bitter. Hebrews 12 verse 15 you can walk in the grace of god when you have a bitter heart that's why you have to forgive men look at it say looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god look at it look at it don't miss me here looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god read the next line everybody want to go lest any root of bitterness sprinkling up trouble you and thereby many how will someone fall from the grace of god when a root of bitterness springs up in your heart lest any man fail of the grace of god semicolon through any root of bitterness sprinkling up in your heart anytime your heart is bitter you block the grace of god from being expressed in your life you're bitter with your friend you're bitter with your partner you're bitter with even your enemies any root of somebody say any root of bitterness any bitterness any bitterness some are even bitter with their pastor it's possible some are bitter with pastor come are bitter with the church mm -hmm. maybe because pastor rebuked them Get it. So they sit down. Then, it was a war. You know the pastor doesn't even know. So you're hurting yourself. <laughs> and you know most of the time the person that you're bitter with don't even know that you're bitter. So the person is dancing and you're killing yourself. The person is rejoicing. Oh hallelujah! The Lord is good. Sincerely from his heart. And then you're sitting there talking. Mm, 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 mm. Let's say any root. He said, "Let's say any man." He said, "Look diligently." Somebody said, "Diligently." Diligent. Look diligently. Let's any man fail of the grace of God. How? By a root of bitterness entering your heart. Because when bitterness enters your heart, 
the grace goes. Do you know who John the Baptist was? Do you know who John the Baptist was? None that was born of a woman that was to be compared to him. Have you heard what I'm saying? In other words, Elijah is not to be compared to John the Baptist. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Elijah, David, he said, all born of a woman was not to be compared to John the Baptist. But the same John the Baptist, a woman caught his head because of bitterness. The grace for protection was taken away from him. When you go back home, study that scripture. Of all that is born of a woman, none like him. But just a little moment of bitterness. How can Jesus come? I heard when the Messiah come, he will come and open prison doors to them that are bound. Has he not heard that I'm in the prison? Has he not heard? He got angry in the prison. And after a while, he now sent two of you. He said, you, you, two of you, you two, come, you, two of you, come. Come, come, follow me. He said, come. I heard that Jesus that they talked about has come. Please, go now, look for where he's doing crusade. When you see him, ask him if he's the one that was to come. Or if we should look for another one. Because he, the Bible said when he comes, he will open prison doors. I am here. <laughs> Inside the prison. And the people went to Jesus. Have you not read it? They went to Jesus. And I said, um, excuse me, sir. Jesus said, yes. He said, our master sent us to you. He said, what? He said, we, he said, we should come and ask you if you are truly the one <laughs> that was to come because this man has been in the prison. You have not done anything about it. And Jesus looked at them. But look at this. The Bible says Jesus looked at the two men. He said, in a moment, that's the one that struck my heart. The Bible says, in a moment, he healed all manner of... Now, this is, this is a situation. It was not like, you come, be healed, you hold. He just said, everyone that is sick, stand up. And everyone stood up. And just, <laughs> blind, crippled, everyone. The Bible says, in a moment, <laughs> all of them got healed. And all of them were like, who? He said, have you seen? They said, yes. He said, am I the one? They said, you are the one. He said, okay, go and tell him. <laughs> he said, go and tell him. He said, not that I wouldn't have done that to him. But offense. He was doing my work with bitterness. He was saving me with anger. That's why I have not come to rescue him. Blessed is he that is not offended. One last thing. You want to grow in the grace of God, grow in thanksgiving. Live a life of thanksgiving. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Let's read together, everybody. Want to go? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Let's go. Want to go? For all things are for your sake, that the abundance of grace might through what? The thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. The abundance of grace through thanksgiving. Just as we had grace through knowledge, we also have grace through thanksgiving. Abound to many. Don't complain over what you should thank God about. I know it is small, but do what? Thank God. It's not the kind of job that you want to do. But thank God for that little job that you're given 3,000 naira. When you give him thanks, then grace for a bigger job is going to come. Can somebody shout hallelujah here? When you thank God for a little, that grace might abound through thanksgiving. Rejoice! It was when Jesus took the little bread and the fish, lifted it up to heaven and gave thanks. The Bible says, and there was multiplication. You want God to multiply grace? You want God to multiply money in your hand? You want God to increase your greatness? You want God to enlarge you? Then let it be through thanksgiving. God's people are so unthankful. It's the spirit of the end time that God will do so much for you. You're still comparing yourself with other people and then you're unthankful. The Bible says in the last days, men will be unthankful. 
I mean, but God, why, why, God, why, but why, but why, God, but why, God, why, God, why, but God, why, if, if you love, if you really, if you're really God, why, why is that sister, why is that sister uh, there now, I am here, and we started together, but look at her, and then you forget that in life, there are slow starters, in life, there are fast starters, and what, and slow starters, Have you not seen people that were left behind and then all of a sudden they overtook? There are some people that don't realize themselves until when they are 30 years and then they just wake up. There are people that realize themselves from when they were 15 years. Some realize when they were even 12. And you are some by destiny. The way God formed you is so that you will realize yourself when you're 25, when you're 30. And listen to me, no matter what you do, if that is God's original plan for your life, you cannot change from it. Am I talking to somebody here? You can't change from it. Because your life must fit into the purpose of God. God created you so that your life will fit into that purpose into that purpose ladies and gentlemen this is a season of grace Jesus died and when he died he exposed to us his grace he was telling us beginning from now you will walk not by your power not by your sweat you will walk by what by my grace all what you need to do is to create this atmosphere around you atmosphere atmosphere create that atmosphere Love the Lord with sincerity, insincerity. Be passionate about God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Live a thankful life. A life of praise and adoration. And what again did I talk about? A, a life of forgiveness. Take away bitterness from your heart. By doing this, you are exposing yourself to the grace of God. And then when God releases his presence upon your life everybody around you will see the grace of god listen to me the hardest life to live is to live a life that is void of the grace the hardest life praise god i believe you've been blessed